Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited, flight design broadens its scope under new owner. FAA proposes special conditions for Bell 525 helicopter. And President Trump signs space policy directive. Hello, I'm Laura Hudson. It's December 13th, and this is Airborne Unlimited. Flight design may be under new ownership, but it plans to continue to be a leader in design and manufacturing of light aircraft. Flight design was acquired by Lift Air of Eisenach, Germany last July, and has been rebranded as Flight Design General Aviation GmbH. As a part of the acquisition, Lift Air now owns the Flight Design EOSA Design Organization, the Flight Design Aircraft Production Facility in Kursan, Ukraine, and the design rights for all products produced by the company. Flight Design's new management team is headed by CEO Lars Jairges, a businessman from the region with experience in advanced composites and technology development. Production of aircraft and parts, which was maintained at a low rate for the last year and a half, are now up to four aircraft a month, and a healthy backlog of aircraft orders is building for 2018. Tom Pagini, president of Flight Design USA, noted that we have been working with them for a year and a half, and they have been very supportive of our business and have great plans for the future. To begin with, they have helped us get a full running inventory of parts again, to shorten lead times and to be able to offer AOG special delivery of repair parts again. After the break, Airbus may cut A380 production. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Sandia introduces the new SAI 340 Quattro TSO'd airspeed, attitude, altitude, and slip. With integral backup battery, safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero. Based on the popular Sling 2 LSA, the Sling 4 was designed to be the most practical and desirable lightweight four-place experimental aircraft on the market. Find out more about this 115-horsepower turbocharged airplane at AirplaneFactory.com. Welcome back. If you have a story suggestion for Airborne Unlimited, Aero TV, Airborne Unmanned, the AMA Drone Report, our website or podcast, just email to news-spy at aero-news.net. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're summarizing some other interesting stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. With demand for very large four-engine passenger jets continuing to decline, Airbus is reportedly considering a production cut for its A380 line to six per year to try to make the airplane commercially viable through the end of the decade. The European plane maker has previously announced a production cut to 12 aircraft in 2018 and 8 in 2019. At one time, Airbus made 30 of the super jumbo jets per year. The 2017 Canadian Arctic Aviation Tour had grand plans for the celebration of the nation's 150th anniversary. Some 97 air shows were planned across northern Canada last summer to mark the occasion. But Nancy McClure, the show's organizer, pulled the plug on the tour after completing only 60 of the shows, saying the money had run out. The plan was to hold an air show over every northern Canadian community. By a majority vote of the IAC Board of Directors in a special meeting, a decision was made to return the U.S. National Aerobatic Championships to Oshkosh, Wisconsin in 2018. The dates for the championships will be Saturday, September 22nd to Friday, September 28th. Jack Pelton, chairman and CEO of EAA, has pledged full support of the event. Boeing CEO Dennis Muhlenberg thinks the first humans to travel to Mars will go there on a spacecraft built by Boeing, despite ambitious plans by SpaceX to get there first. Muhlenberg made the prediction during an interview, stating that it is his belief the first person to set foot on Mars will get there on a Boeing rocket. The SLS rocket under development by Boeing is in final assembly in New Orleans. The first test flight is scheduled for 2019. 
Well, that's it for today's trip around the patch. Now let's move on to the rest of the news. The FAA has posted a notice of proposed special conditions for the Bell 525 relentless helicopter in the Federal Register. The agency says that the helicopter will have a novel or unusual design feature associated with the fly-by-wire flight control system functions that affect the pilot awareness of the flight control modes while operating the helicopter. The applicable airworthiness regulations do not contain adequate or appropriate safety standards for this design feature. These proposed special conditions contain the additional safety standards that the administrator considers necessary to establish a level of safety equivalent to that established by the existing airworthiness standards. The Relentless will be equipped with a 4-axis Full Authority Digital FBW FCS that provides for aircraft control through pilot input and coupled flight director modes. Current regulations are inadequate in the area of pilot awareness of the flight control modes while operating the helicopter. The proposed special condition will require the suitable mode enunciation be provided to the flight crew for events that significantly change the operating mode of the system, but do not merit the traditional warnings, cautions, and advisories. The FAA says that a means must be provided to indicate to the crew any mode that significantly changes or degrades the handling or operational characteristics of the rotorcraft. After these messages, President Trump signs Space Policy Directive. In collaboration with NASC, introducing Sonics Aerospace, bringing you the Taros Group 4 UAS, the redesigned Tiger Shark Block 4, and the Subsonics Twin Jet UAS, all derived from flight proven manned systems, not concepts, real aircraft. More at sonicsaerospace.com. Welcome back. President Donald Trump is sending astronauts back to the moon. On Monday, the President signed the White House Space Policy Directive 1, a change in the national space policy that provides for a U.S.-led integrated program with the private sector partners for human return to the moon, followed by missions to Mars and beyond. The policy calls for NASA Administrator to lead an innovative and sustainable program of exploration with commercial and international partners to enable human expansion across the solar system and to bring back to Earth new knowledge and opportunities. The effort will more effectively organize government, private industry, and international efforts toward returning humans on the moon, and will lay the foundation that will eventually enable human exploration of Mars. The directive I am signing today will refocus America's space program on human exploration and discovery, said President Trump. It marks the first step in returning American astronauts to the moon for the first time since 1972 for long-term exploration and use. This time, we will not only plant our flag and leave our footprints, we will establish a foundation for an eventual mission to Mars, and perhaps someday to many worlds beyond. The policy grew for a unanimous recommendation by the new National Space Council, chaired by Vice President Mike Pence after its first meeting October 5th. Well, that's our program for today. Remember that Airborne Unlimited is currently on our winter schedule and is streamed Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, alternating with Airborne Unmanned on Tuesday and the AMA Drone Report each Thursday. Additional breaking news bulletins may be posted for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. If you're watching us on YouTube, please subscribe and do check us out on Facebook and Twitter. Get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. See you tomorrow.